going to record this session so if you want i'll send i'll send the link out to anybody who's who signed up for this webinar and then they can watch it in their own time as well um okay all right um my name's chris Rao. um i work as academic developer in CRIT, which is the Centre for Research Informed Teaching, which is um, over at London Road building uh, at LSBU. Okay, so I've been doing a series of these webinars, um, sort of touching some of the issues that people have been concerned about. And one of them is that um, people are concerned about uh, what should go into a Moodle site. So I've called this webinar the Moodle site health check. Um, okay. And again, before I really get into it, um, what I've done is I want, I'm, I've kind of muted um, the uh, the mics. So I'm the one who, only one who can talk at the moment. Um, but if you want to ask me a question or uh, make a comment, um, there's a chat room facility. So um, if you see the bottom left hand side of the screen, there's a little bubble. I've indicated this with the sort of red arrow on the bottom. So if you click on that um, speech mark, there's an instant messaging where you can um, leave a comment. So if I just type in there, hello, um, the comments will come up on the left hand side of the screen so it'd be great if you want to ask me any questions okay um, in terms of the content what I'm aiming to do is not to go through every single thing that can go into a Moodle site um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is give you a tour of a Moodle module that contains all the Dell baseline standards so there is a document called the Dell Baseline. Dell, um, the, the initials stand for Digitally Enhanced um, Learning Baseline. So basically it's what are minimum recommendations on what should go into a Moodle module. Um, so the baseline, and there's, there's a, a document that goes through this in some detail, you can access this in Moodle. At the top right hand part of the screen, there's a little blue button called Moodle Help. If you click on there, um, it will take you to the online search. And then if you go in there and look at handouts, you can see there's the Dell baseline document. The document's quite, I mean, it is detailed, but actually it really just contains four essential elements. So the Moodle administration information, so in there, there would be an, exp uh, an expectation that you would upload the module handbook. The, um, there would be things like um, what, what the students are expected to do, both in the classroom and an online. Um, maybe the module evaluation questionnaires, that sort of thing. Secondly, we, we've got the learning and teaching activities and resources. So again, these are types of things that probably most lecturers are familiar with, uploading their lecture slides, um, putting up um, any handouts or any videos, that sort of thing. Thirdly, assessment and feedback. So obviously this is where the assignments are posted, many assignment briefs or assessment criteria, that sort of thing. And then finally, any learner support information. So this might be information about where they can get help who they can get help from um, it might be something specific to that uh, particular module or subject area so it might be links to some specific software so if you're teaching architecture or engineering it might be links to some CAD software or something like that okay so that's essentially an outline of what should go into a module. Um, what I'm going to do now is give you a live demo. I've mocked up a module um, which is based around that Dell baseline. So I'm going to go into Moodle now, show you what this mocked up module looks like, and then hopefully you'll get an understanding of what type of things need to, need to go into a module as a sort of minimum. Uh, basic minimum standard. So if you just bear with me for a couple of seconds while I lo load the Moodle module. 
shouldn't take too long. Um, okay, so hopefully you can see a live screen of um, LSB's Mo uh, Moodle site. So I've logged in. This is the dashboard page. So um, I'm going to go into a module called e-learning. So I'm just going to click on there. And it just takes a couple of seconds to load. So again, hopefully you're kind of familiar with the look and layout of Moodle. Um, in it, I've uploaded um, a number of things that give you a sort of an outlook of what a module typical module should look like now as i say the purpose of not the, of this is not to show you every single thing that moodle can do it's really just to give you an overview of how to set out your moodle module and also what what what's the sort of minimum that you need to put into it for it to meet the baseline of what's expected of you as a lecturer here at lsbu Okay, so when you go into any module, um, where even when it's a uh, an empty shell, there will always be announcements um, at the top of the page. Um, this is for you as the lecturer to post announcements to your students. So be it room changes, um, just a, it's a one it's a way of communicating with your students. But it is a one way communication. So you as the lecturer can post comments to your students, but they can't reply in that announcement forum. Um, something that I think is a really good idea and is part of the baseline is that you would put up along here along with the announcements page a another discussion forum where and I've called it meet your peers or introduce yourself and this is a way that students can just introduce themselves into the module um, chances are they'll probably go into the module even before you've met them in a face-to-face -face context so if you ask them to introduce themselves you know it could be just something very simple by saying what their name is I don't know um, what they expect to get out of the module or even just more simple than that just like what their hobbies are where they've come from um, I don't know what they think of London or something like that just to get them to used to actually going into your module and actually posting a comment um, some of them will be used to posting comments but for others it could be the first time they've actually done this and the advantage of this is that you can respond to their comments so if you if I just click on the link for a second um, they can add a new discussion and you could respond to those individual students so it's just quite a nice way of setting up an introduction and more importantly it gets the student used to actually contributing into the Moodle site if they feel confident actually doing that here then if you actually set up a discussion area later on in the course they're going to feel more likely to actually add a comment later on Okay, so that's the first thing that I would recommend that goes at the top of the page. Then, sorry, I'm snivelling a bit. I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. I try not to cough into the microphone. Um, below that, I've added three sections. So module overview, assessment and feedback, resources and learner support. Um, I've put these three things at the top of the page because I think they're probably most important and these are the things that students quite often want to know even before they've started looking at the content of week one. So let me click on the first um, section and I'll give you some ideas for what would go into this section on the module overview. So first of all, I've added a label just saying what would go be in the, what's what's in this section. So I've added a few things as typical examples. So first one is a Moodle module orientation. So um, I've actually uploaded this as a PowerPoint. Um, so if I click on there. I'm not actually, it will open, but I'm not sure if you'll actually be able to see it using Skype for Business. But in there, it would give you an overview of what you're expecting your students to actually do in this module. 
So for example, how many hours you'd maybe expect the students to be working on the module inside of Moodle. Um, are you asking them to contribute to any discussion forums, any chat rooms? Um, are you expecting them to download any uh, research papers? Are you expecting them to watch any videos? So clearly at the start of the module or start of the course, you're outlining what your expectations are from the students, not just in the physical environment in the classroom, but also within the, the, the Moodle module as well. Along with that, um, I've got a um, second link is a module guide. So I suspect for 99% of all modules delivered here at Southbank, there is a module guide that's already written, which has to be done for validation. So quite often the paper copy is given to the students as well, but it's great if you can give them an electronic copy as well and upload this in this section as well. Um, the third link, and I've added this as a page in module, are the contact details of the team. So I think it was my colleague who actually added these. So in terms of the module leader, we've got their name, we've got their email address, telephone number, location, and probably more importantly, their office hours. So when are they actually expected to be about? So if you're the leader or the lecturer on this course, when, 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 when are you actually willing to or able to see your students? And also, along with that, um, probably a good idea to add the course administrator as well, um, their room and where they are, and preferably when they're um, available as well. OK, so just going back, um, the contact details. Um, the other section, which is uh, uh, really should be added into all modules, is the mo module evalu evaluation questionnaire. This doesn't necessarily have to be put up straight away at the start of the um, the module, but towards the end of the module, um, you can add it as a link. And it's relatively easy to do that. Just turn editing on, add add it as a link. Um, and then students can fill in. It's pretty standard form in terms of mo module evaluation for this particular module. OK, so that's the first section, basically giving you a module overview. Um, obviously, there might be other documents in there that are relevant to your particular course that you're teaching. But that's the essentials of what should go into the first section. Second section I've got uh, is assessment and feedback. Again, really important, and it's really, really important that this section is made absolutely clear where the students submit their work. So um, again, that's why I've put it at the top of the page. Um, quite a lot of lecturers, um, not through their own faults, but actually tuck the assignment submissions away. Um, so make sure that you've clearly labeled them. So um, again, I've used a label at the top to say what's in this section. Um, so basically, the students know straight away there are two assignments. Um, and obviously called assignments one and assignments two. They've got an assignment brief, which in both these cases is a PDF document. And they've actually got two submission areas. Again, um, it's quite a good idea to set these up straight away. I mean, any student who goes into a module almost without exception they're going to look at when the assignment what the assignments are when the assignment dates are etc um, you can see on the second assignment as well um, it's got a rubric that's attached to it um, i'll be doing a, a similar webinar at a later date on how to set up rubrics in moodle um, also one other tip is that if it's a turn it in assignment, so when you set the assignments up, uh, you switch on the turn it in uh, software, which is the plagiarism detection software. Um, it's again, it's a good idea to have that assignment set up at the start of when the module starts. So if the students want to submit any work, they can see their similarity score. Okay, and then um, along with that, again, this is something that 
the baseline asks for lecturers to do, but I don't actually see it very often, is to provide an assignment marking criteria. So based on what, what's the criteria that they're actually uh, going to be marked on. And then finally, although I haven't, I've just put a, a heading there, um, if this was an exam or test uh, at the end of it based on their summative assessment, um, it gives them some information, again, at the start of the module in terms of what would be in the test or exam, um, obviously not the questions, but actually what, 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 what type of things they can expect at an early stage. Okay, all right. Um, so again, I've tried to clearly label that um, and make it as simple and accessible as possible. The final section um, is the resources and learner support. Again, um, here's some examples based on the module template and module baseline of what sort of things should go into here as well. So the first link is a link to a discussion forum. So we've got a module frequently asked questions. So it's great to have this as a place that students can ask you as the lecturer any particular questions they might have. They might do so outside of the classroom, which is great. And also um, it, it, it can in certain examples uh, lead to actually um, some discussion that might actually happen between the students as well. Um, again, in terms of the other links, we've got a module study guide. So in terms of what's the students' expectations and what they're going to study. And then along with that, I've uploaded some sample essays or assignments. So again, having examples of previous students' work is something that students always like to see. Um, I've uploaded just as, as a link, but maybe you'd want to give them some guidance a little bit more in terms of saying this is a previous student's work, maybe upload examples of good student piece of work, but also maybe bad students of work where they've made common mistakes. So you can highlight those as well. And again, um, if this is an exam based course, it's quite a good example to give um, give some sample exam questions or even some sample exam answers. Um, exemplar answers or or ones that didn't do so bad with maybe some comments as well. Okay, so that's not a definitive list. There may be other things that um, are more relevant to your specific, specific subject discipline. So for example, you know, if you are teaching a particular topic, there might be links to um, some specific software or you might want to provide some guidance to um, referencing or something like that. So, um, but those are kind of the sort of things that should go into that section. Okay, those are much, those first three sections are mostly to do with the administration. Um, the next bit is really about uploading your content so the types of resources so as you can see on the left hand side the week is divided up into the course is divided up into nine weeks over the semester um, and typically speaking I suppose most lecturers will will do something similar so it doesn't have to be done like this but I say looking at most modules it certainly is so I've just labeled this week one week two and so on um, it's maybe a good idea to actually not just label the weeks, but actually say what the content of those specific weeks are. So in the first one, I've called it uh, join a tutorial presentation group. So if I just click on there, um, you can see the structure of week one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've just added a couple of features, a couple of newish features on this section. So sign up for a tutorial or sign up here for a presentation group. These are two new features that we've just added into Moodle and I'll be doing a separate webinar on those as well on the sort of new features that we can add into Moodle. Not going to really talk about those today but I just want you to show you the sort of layout of 
a content of a particular week and I've followed this layout for the rest of the other weeks so that students become very familiar to this look and feel and they would know exactly where to go. So at the top of the page I've added a label and it clearly tells the student what's in this section. So this section will include lecture notes, additional notes and activities and further reading. So under the first heading we've got the lecture notes and again um, week one intro, well, I've called it intro to Moodle but it'd be week one intro to business or intro to whatever topic you're teaching. Um, those are the lecture notes in this particular case it's a PDF but um, it could just as equally be a video or just as equally it could be the PowerPoint slides from the actual lecture uploaded into this section. The second section is additional resources and activities. So this might be, for example, things like handouts that you gave in the lesson. They might be a recording of actually the lecture or anything that you know you feel like enhances or adds to the first week's activities. Um, and then finally, um, we've got further study. So maybe these an indication of sort of places where students can go if they want to go beyond the content of the first lesson or if you if you want to direct them to sort of some future related topics. Um, and that's quite a nice simple structure uh, for the students. I think they can easily see where to go. Um, and what I've done is followed the same structure for all the other weeks. So I've got a label just saying what's in that section or that particular week. We've got the same headings, lecture notes, additional resources, further study. Going all the way down, week four, week eight, and so on. Okay, so I think sort of the takeout from that is that have some level of consistency um, between the weeks. Students get quite confused if you use one layout in one particular week or one particular topic and then you change the layout if you go to the next week. So try and think about the consistency across the weeks. And then finally um, you can see we have an additional section at the bottom of the page where it's got external examiners content. Um, again this is completely greyed out so let me go back to the the course home page and scroll down that way you can see it's greyed out um, and this section is hidden so the students can't actually see it so if you want to put in any additional information maybe some sample work that you've actually marked then that can go into that particular session Okay, right, I'm running over time a little bit now, so um, I'm going to sort of end it there. Um, that's that's in 20 or 24, 25 minutes and sort of overview of the typical layout, the structure, um, and what sort of things should go into it. Um, if I go back up to the top, I, m I mentioned the um, LSB Moodle baseline which was the document that I said all of this module is based on. So if you go right to the top in the top left hand corner you'll see the Moodle help blue button. If you click on there and then click on click here for online help materials it's tucked away a little bit and then uh, go to help sheets you will find a sort of more in-depth document which will take you through all of that content in a little bit more detail. Okay that's it in terms of my sort of presentation so let me go back to my slides. Um, Okay, I can't actually see any questions in there that I need to go over anything else. Um, 
just go through a couple more slides. Well, I've already mentioned this, so further help or support, go back to that Moodle help. Again, there's some online resources, but if you need some face-to-face -face help as well, you can, there's a link on there that will take you and you can book a session with somebody who can help you um, go through all of this stuff in a little bit more detail. Um, finally, we have some future webinars, more, more webinars coming up over the course of this semester. Um, so um, these can be booked via the MySpace, which is on the staff intranet. Um, so future ones that are coming up are approaches to providing electronic feedback. Um, so really that one's just about looking at um, how we use rubrics in Moodle. Um, I'll show you how to set, set rubrics up. Uh, what's new in Moodle? So again, there are a few new features that have been, in, well, they're not so new now, but they were introduced last summer. A couple of them I showed, um, showed you in the module. And then anonymous marking in Moodle. Um, again, that's, that's a relatively new feature. And then getting Moodle ready for next semester, which um, is kind of starting now so um, but you can book out book up for any of those sessions uh, via the myspace on the internet all right uh, those are my contact details so um, if you need to contact me there's my email address and I'm based in LR134 okay I'll switch the recording off